Oh, I see. Okay, great. So our last, last uh, presentation before we go to the FAST presentations will be from Zoe and on mapping UK Biobank to the experimental factor ontology. Hi, I'm Zoe. I work as an ontologist in the samples, phenotypes, and ontologies team at the EBI. <clears throat> so first off, what is the UK Biobank? The UK Biobank is a large-scale prospective population study <laughs> that collects data from around half a million volunteers. And these were recruited between 2006 and 2010 with an age criteria of being between 40 and 69 years old. And the data was collected through questionnaires and medical and physical examinations. And the data that was collected was on health and disease, phenotype, lifestyle, socioeconomic socio and environmental factors, cognitive ability, and genotyping. And then 20% of the volunteers wore a 24-hour activity monitor that would monitor the activity, heart rate, and sleep. So the Experimental Factor Ontology, or EFO, is an application ontology that provides a systematic description of many experimental variables available in the EBI databases and for projects such as the GWAS catalog. It combines parts of several biomedical ontologies, for example, Uberon for anatomy, Kebi for the chemical compounds, and HPO for phenotypes. And so instead of compiling all of the existing million plus terms from all of the other ontologies, only the terms that are necessary to link the data and provide data searchability for the EBI are included. So as a result, the scope of, the e the, of EFO is to support the annotation and analysis and visu visualization of data handled by many groups at the EBI. <clears throat> so why should we map the UK Biobank to EFO? So there are many uses of the UK Biobank data, and currently health services are using the UK Biobank data to aid in diagnostic tooling, as well as linking electronic health records to gain more insights on specific diseases, such as cancer, and death circumstances, hospital admissions, and general health. So these traits, however, are not represented by a consensus terminology, and therefore the UK Biobank data is not fully interoperable with other public services. So some traits are currently mapped to ICD-10, which is used extensively in the medical and clinical world, but it's not easily implementable for searching or visualizing data in large-scale resources. And as EFO is an established application ontology that's currently used by many large services, and it links to other public ontologies such as Mondo, it's still well connected, and mapping to EFO provides a lot of new potential for interoperability with public data sources. So one use case of mapping UK Biobank data to EFO is Open Targets. And Open Targets is a public-private partnership that aims to validate drug targets and thereby advancing drug research and aiding the production of safe and effective therapies. So EFO is used as the Open Targets chosen ontology, and it provides harmonization of data coming from over 30 active projects within Open Targets. And EFO also provides a powerful tool for the Open Targets search interface. <clears throat> a second use case is the GWAS catalog of published genome-wide association studies. So increasingly, GWAS are using UK Biobank data, which requires mapping and annotating to EFO terms to be included in the GWAS catalog. And this will help to support harmonization of traits, phenotypes, and diseases, and support cross-querying and visualization. And a third use case is increasing the interoperability. So as I previously mentioned, some of the traits, but not all of them, have been mapped to ICD-10 codes. And while it's more ideal than not being mapped to any vocabulary at all, ICD-10 doesn't provide optimal, interoperable, and harmonizing vocabulary. So EFO imports terms from and contains cross-references to many different ontologies. And consequently, EFO acts as a bridge ontology where an ICD-10 code can be mapped to an EFO term, which then cross-references many different ontologies 
So in this example, we can see that the UK biobank trait for Alzheimer's was mapped to the ICD-10 code for Alzheimer's disease. And these both map to an EFO term. And then using our ontology cross-referencing service, we get this result. So this is a snippet of the results for just that one Alzheimer's term, EFO term, mapping to many other ontology terms such as NCIT, OMIM, Mondo, and HPO. <clears throat> So, the UK Biobank data consisted of 1,552 traits, and they were split into two groups. The first group was the ICD-10 map traits, which are trait descriptions mapped to ICD-10 codes previously. And the second group was the self-reported traits, which are trait descriptions with no prior mappings, and these came from the NEIL lab. So we aim to map both groups of traits to EFO using a variety of tools available from Spot Ontology Tooling Suite alongside manual curation of the results. So the tooling suite consists of a variety of tools that assist with the challenges of mapping data to ontologies and improving interoperability of data. So first we have the annotation tool Zuma. Second, we have the ontology cross-referencing service OXO. And finally, we have the ontology lockup service OLS. So here's an example of some of the traits from the UK Biobank data that were previously mapped to, to the ICD-10 codes. Okay, and Zuma automatically provides optimal ontology mapping suggestions for terms using a combination of ontologies and previously curated data sources. So here are the previous slides examples that have been automatically annotated by Zuma. And then we would manually create curate this result. And here we have OXO that provides the ability to cross-reference terms from one ontology to another. So here we have the examples again with the results that are mapping from the ICD-10 code to EFO. So note that the OXO only works for previously mapped traits that have been mapped to ICD-10 because it requires an ID rather than just free text entry like Zuma. So then once we performed the automated mapping, we went with manual curation of these mappings. And so this included manually curate, curating every suggested mapping and, and assigning a label of exact, broad, narrow, inadequate, or no mapping. So in the end, almost 60% of the mappings were exact, meaning that the UK Biobank trait and the MAP2 term were deemed fully equivalent. 36% of mappings were broad, meaning that the MAP2 term can be considered a larger concept than the trait itself. So for example, mapping lung adenocarcinoma trait to lung cancer. 3% of mappings were narrow, meaning that the MAP2 term can be considered a smaller concept than the trait. So, for example, mapping lung cancer to lung adenocarcinoma. And then the remaining traits had no current mapping in EFO. So after the first phase of the automated mapping, any traits with inadequate mappings and traits that had no mapping at all were searched for using OLS. OLS is a search repository available for looking up ontology terms and browsing ontologies. So the manual mapping of these terms occurred in three stages. First, we searched EFO for existing term mappings. Then we searched for ontologies that are imported into EFO. And then finally, we searched all of the ontologies, which is over 200 ontologies in OLS. And then traits with no adequate mapping after this process were then reviewed and split into two groups terms that require new terms being created in EFO, and then terms that we considered unmappable and required further work. So here's an example of our mapping results. The first row shows an exact mapping from Zuma for do you often feel lonely to loneliness measurement that was retained in the final, ma final mapping file after manual curation. Second, we have the ICD-10 code for other disorders of eye and adnexa diseases classified elsewhere that OXO mapped to itself. So during manual curation, we rejected this mapping and instead mapped to a Mondo term. And then we created a new term that cross-referenced ICD-10 and Mondo. And this was a broad mapping type. And then the third is a self-reported trait for, has a doctor ever told you that any of that you have any of the conditions below indicating lung cancer. 
Zuma incorrectly mapped this to lung cancer cell line, and so during manual curation, we then mapped this to lung, adeno a lung carcinoma. And this was a narrow mapping that helped to point out that EFO's cancer branch requires a lot of work and development. So in the end, 50% of our ICD-10 map traits, I don't know where one of my pie charts is missing. <laughs> in the end, almost 50% of the ICD-10 map traits were exact, and 45% were broad, and 3% were narrow. And contrastly, 73% of the self-reported trait mappings were exact, 20% broad, and 5% narrow and the remaining terms were not mapped and then required further curation over the past few months. So changes that were made to EFO during this process were cross-references added to existing EFO terms to ICD-10, and this increases the interoperability of EFO. We had 227 terms that were added to EFO, and these consisted of entirely novel terms, Mondo equivalent terms, NCIT equivalent terms, and others and we also had 73 terms that were imported from HPO. Um, it's worth noting that at the time of our mappings, EFO was undergoing improvement to version three, and this was to minimize duplication of effort for creating new terms across the bioontologies world. Um, so therefore, many of the new terms cr created in EFO would now have instead of been imported from other ontologies or requested in the, those ontologies before imp being imported. And as EFO is driven by user requests, some areas of EFO are richer than others. So as a result, mapping the UK biobank traits actually highlighted many areas that required further development, such as the cancer branch. And so we're hopefully going to uh, do this in the future using domain ontologies. So going forward, um, the UK biobank will be expanding to contain more information from imaging areas of interest, such as the brain, and exome sequencing. And furthermore, due to the aging population, more data will be collected regarding aging and disease. So therefore, we expect mapping UK biobank data to be ongoing work for EFO. Encouragingly, in this first phase, 97% of the traits were mapped, and the, remain the remainder were curated and added to EFO over the last few months. So our automatic pipeline, the third of the mappings generated by this pipeline were retained in the final mapping file, and these mappings are currently in Zuma, and hopefully this will continue to improve as we continue to map UK Biobank data. And we've got the suggestion of improving our pipeline. We've considered validating our mappings after some concerns were raised through a review by an expert or a clinician prior to being loaded into Zuma. So you can find more information about the toolkit and our automated pipeline in EFO um, alongside the mappings at these links. And I've also included some, map some links to Open Targets and the GWAS catalog. And I'd like to extend a big thank you to both the current and past members of the team who developed these tools, and a particular thank you to Paula and Simon, who worked alongside myself on the mappings, and Ed and Gautier for performing the first round of curation using the automated pipeline. Thank you for listening, and I'll be happy to answer any questions. Yes, yes we are. We're slowly getting about 1,000 to 2,000 terms at a time coming from the GWAS catalog curators, so hopefully we'll be getting those over time. Oh, there we go. So how many of the, the traits are these kind of questionnaire type traits like, you know, drinks more than three pints, a day, and yeah. what do you do with those? Do they just go into EFO as a flat list, or do you link, link so they, them? They were a lot of the tricky ones that we were required to go back and review. Um, a lot of them remained unmapped for a while because we didn't know what to do with them. So a lot of them have been mapped to measurement terms from the GWAS catalog that they've requested. Um, I think it was just under half of these terms were that sort of self-reported trait. Yeah, you might be interested in talking.
work in qualitative um, surveys, yes. um, so the social sciences community yes. and humanities, so they have built all kinds of terminologies and structures for definitely. managing questionnaires. Yes, definitely. I think that's the next step going forward yeah. because we didn't know how to handle some of these terms. Yeah. Some of them were straightforward and some of them were far more complicated. Yeah, sure. Nice. <laughs> nice work. Okay, um, so it looks like that's Thank it you. for the questions. Thank you very much.